Mario, time to go, boys. You gotta want it. You gotta fucking need it. And you have to live it. No, go out here on the field and be the young man. I'm raising y'all to be. You got a character, you play to the whistle, and you ball the fuck out. Go win the damn game. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, here's what happened. Watkins will run the toss, but as the third. And we're going to start at the 10-yard line. We've got four plays on offense to score. Ethan Grass, the ball carrier, chased out at about the five-yard line. Slosser's pass is complete to number seven, Aziz Baby, for the Watkins Mill touchdown. In 1989, when the school opened, couldn't tell you the exact percentages of white to minority, but I'm guessing we were at least 60 or 65 percent white. They were still reaping the benefit of these affluent families and playing in the local uh, youth organizations around here, and that just fed into Rockland's We had baseball championships. The school wasn't open that long, and they had a, a football state championship '93. Then the neighborhood's starting to turn over. Montgomery County has a, a, a great law. Every apartment complex or complex built has to have a section of it dedicated to Section 8 housing or HOC. The hood is no longer the hood. The hood is in the suburbs now because of gentrification. They built these cities up where they used to be crime infested and poverty stricken. They built these places up and those people that used to live there can no longer live there. So what happens is they have to move. Where do they move to? The suburbs, because the suburbs have this whole law, especially in Montgomery County, that they have to provide HOC, they have to provide Section 8 housing. Since 1989 to now, I think we've gone to 8% white and 92% minority of some kind. We're fifth in line for uh, free and reduced. There's four other schools that are poorer than we are which people are amazed by because we're an up county school. Um, but we've struggled with poverty and poverty brings issues when it comes to education. If you don't have cleats, you're gonna run up here. This is the last place that most people wanna be. Um, that is the rep that we have. Um, we're called anywhere from Gangsters to thugs to criminals. I mean, that's what they think. Um, you have schools that are afraid to come here for a game. 
we get that rep because of what may go, what may be happening in the community, which is not fair here in the building. It's not fair. Um, but things happen everywhere in, a, in all kinds of communities. We just happen to be on the news about it. We decided to make a stand as a school and as a football program. And um, at the start of our season, we took a knee to the national anthem to raise awareness for what's going on in our communities. And we had a lot of backlash. That was kind of a um, trickle down from Colin Kaepernick. You know, we saw him taking a knee. And Just like Colin Kaepernick of the 49ers. Most of the threats are coming from adults. I think that's childish of them. Principal Carol Goldman has received dozens of emails in support and against the protest. One tweet told players there will be a price to pay on my field. I remember lots of people outside of the school being upset by that. That didn't sit well with the host school. If that was my child kneeling on the field, we'd have a serious problem at home. If you're gonna kneel, I don't think you should be allowed to play. There's definitely other ways to protest. The flag is not a racial flag. It all became about disrespecting the national anthem, the flag, the military, and that had nothing to do with feel as if we're being disrespectful. Um, the public sees it as um, we're being defiant. This peaceful gesture was not designed to hurt or disrespect or offend any individual or group, specifically our veterans and our police officers. It's disrespectful to the veterans and, I mean, you look at all the veterans that have died and fought, there's no distinguishing color. So I called my son, who's a captain in the Army. I called him, I said, Jimmy, what do you think about all this? He said, Dad, we fight so that people in America can protest the way that they want to protest. He said, I think the kids are showing good leadership. I congratulate you for taking a stand for social justice as a high school student. It's making a difference. I say, if, if you offend one or a million people, um, but it saves one life, it makes uh, a police officer think twice about killing a young minority, and it's totally worth it. But the two things I can't control is what? Anybody? My attitude and what? And my effort. Those two things I wake up every morning I can control. Yeah, I can be pissed off or upset, but I need to breathe and control my attitude and control my effort. If those two things you can't control and I don't get your, your best effort and your best attitude, no matter if you're in ninth grade or 12th grade, you will not play for this program. Is that clear? Yes, sir. There'll be two sessions. Session one, lunch, session two. They, they test them. They did a 40, they did a short shuttle, they did the cone drill, they did a broad jump, they did the vertical, all these different things. We'll warm them up, test them, um, go to lunch, come back, and then we'll split them up into individual. So offensive linemen, you're going with Coach Miller. Linebackers, you're going, going with uh, Steve and Rod, DBs, YouTube, you know what I'm saying? Running back, receiver, Paul, D line, quarterback. We're gonna test out. Short shuttle, 40 yard dash, three gun drill. I'll give you the direction. Then we're gonna water again in five minutes. Then we're gonna go to the station. We'll have five stations. Get there. Different things. I'll break up into your groups again. We'll rock the stations. We'll get some water. We'll do a conditioning. Break. During that break, I'm tired of like the me. motherfucking tears after an L. I'm tired of Seneca Valley. I'm tired of Gatesburg. We gonna whoop they ass because of today. Sir. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Sir. We so, whoop in general, for years, uh, there's been a reputation that this is a ghetto school. We're working on changing the reputation that we have, but it's mm. it's a bad. <laughs> This, this is the thing trying for our kids with the single single moms, this and that, they're not used to the word. And I tell them the word discipline. And discipline is not a bad word. It's just a realignment. And they're not used to a male figure. Huh? A male figure. Positive, Positive male figure. Positive male figure. There you go, right. People Older say, uh, Watkins Mill is poor. You know, we got a high farms rate. You know, you see these stats and you like, is it really that bad? I'm like, anybody living in Montgomery County or whatever, we're still one of the richest counties in the nation. But when you really get to know some of these kids and get involved with some of their lives, we got some kids that are struggling. 
Hey guys, um, I'm Ava Butler. I'm the athletic trainer here. This is my third year. Especially working with the football kids here, I know a lot of them don't even get the basic three meals a day or the nutrition that they're needing. And, and that was kind of a hard thing for me to kind of step into working here. Like, what do you mean you didn't have breakfast or lunch? Or what do you mean you don't have money for food? Has everyone been drinking a ton of water? Yes, kind of not so much. I mean, there are our families who are less fortunate uh, living below the poverty line and the kids are here. Uh, some of them, I guess, don't, I guess, don't have lunches to eat. Who didn't bring a lunch? Raise your hand. <laughs> you got a kid that's not eating, not getting the proper sleep at home, not getting the proper mental well-being and physical well-being at home, and they come to school and they're just trying to keep it together. 